And I asked God, you know, help me, show me a path out of this place of anxiety and fear. And God, being good, immediately started to teach me things about overcoming fear. And I wanted to share some of what I've learned with you. I was actually on the radio last week, and I think this is important to note. The radio host said, have you really overcome your fears, or are you just saying you have? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm overcoming a cold. And um, <laughs> another fear, that I'll never be healthy again. <laughs> but I told him, we're never not going to be afraid. Fearlessness, while we're on this earth, is kind of a myth. But we can find a way to not be paralyzed by those fears. We can find a way to overcome them. And it is so important, because as long as we're paralyzed by fear, we cannot follow the path that God sets before us. God asks us crazy things. He asks us to do crazy things all the time. And you've got to find a way to courageously say yes. So I'm going to share a few things that God has taught me. I can't go into a lot of detail, but if you have any questions, I'll be here for lunch or you can tweet me. I'm terrible at email. Danielle's here somewhere. She emailed me like, there she is. She emailed like five months ago saying all these sweet things and I just emailed her back yesterday. <laughs> so I apologize, but I'm good at Twitter. I'm like really good at Twitter. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to share with you is the idea that we need to resist living in the wreckage of the future. Because God's peace is found in the here and now. Now, I don't know about you, but when I am faced with a challenge, something I don't know how to overcome, something that's scary, my imagination immediately runs wild. And I run forward to the future with everything I have, and all the worst case scenarios play out in my mind. And I am just completely convinced that the future, with all of its crosses and terrible situations, is destined to play out. You know, my kids, we've homeschooled up until my son was 12, and then just last year, God called us to send them to a brick and mortar school, and I was so terrified of this, because I just always assumed that we would always homeschool. But he led us to this school, and I just, I knew that's what he was calling me to. So we enrolled them in this school, and it was this wonderful experience, and they are thriving, and they are loving it, and it's really, really expensive. And I don't know how we're going to afford it in the fall. And I, wanted run, I want to run into the wreckage of the future, and I want to imagine myself telling them that they can't go back, that they can't see their friends anymore, that we're going back to homeschooling, being taught by your mother, who often cries and sometimes throws things. <laughs> but I'm just resting in God's presence in the here and now. Today, they don't know that. <laughs> Today, we have two months to figure out how maybe we can afford to send them back, because I do think it's God's will. But if it's not, I now today rest in the knowledge that it's because he has something better for us. So resist that temptation to embrace the wreckage of the future and spend too much time kind of analyzing what may come. Because I'll never tell you that hard things aren't coming, but usually the hard things that come aren't actually the hard things that happen. So it's kind of an exercise in futility. The second thing that God taught me and that has been so powerful is to learn to discipline yourself to turn your imagination toward the light. Much like running into the wreckage of the future, when we imagine these difficult things that are going to happen, how often do we forget to include God in that picture? How often do we imagine these tragic, difficult, painful things and forget that in some form or another, in some mystical way, he is going to be there with us, sustaining us. I host a conference, as she mentioned, called the Adele Gathering. And about a year and a half ago, my friend, my co-founder, co Jennifer Fulweiler, and I were picking out the date. And so we, we picked a date, and we said, OK, we've got to go to our calendars and count back nine or 10 months and say, lock down NFP. 
This is what we call foreshadowing. So I didn't do that. And a couple of months later, I found out that I was expecting my son, Max, on the very first day of the conference. <laughs> not the week before, not the week after, but on the very first day. God has a hilarious sense of humor. And I spent a lot of time being really scared about this. Would I give birth at the hotel? <laughs> worse, yes, if there are mothers here, you know what I'm about to say is worse. My water breaks up on the stage. <laughs> Would I give birth a few days beforehand and leave Jen to host the whole thing by herself? And I was consumed by all of these fears. Well, as it turns out, I didn't give birth. My water didn't break. I didn't abandon Jen. My son did not come till almost 42 weeks. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Love you, Max. He also, as a side note, um, decided to suddenly be born on my bathroom floor, sunny side up, without anyone delivering him. So he and I are going to have a talk a little later. <laughs> but what did happen at the gathering was that the water to the hotel went out, and then the air conditioning went out. So you've invited all of these women to come to our conference, which is really about pampering them. And they've all sacrificed financially to be there. And then they come into this building in the heat of summer in Charleston, South Carolina, and there's no water and there's no air conditioning. Now that's something to fear, but I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> but again, God was there. Everyone was just infused with this joy and it was almost fun to endure this trial. So when I say turn your imagination to the light, when you worry about things, keep in mind that you're probably worrying about the wrong things. And even if you are worrying about the right things, God will be there in that moment with you. The third tip I want to share with you comes from my husband. A little bit before Christmas, we found out that the house we were renting was going to be sold. And I found out during the day when he was at work. So he comes home, and we feed the kids, and I put them to bed, and I sit him down on the couch, and I tell him again, we're utterly doomed. There's no hope. Everything is terrible, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> so I lay out my argument. It was like 15 minutes long of all the reasons that we'd never find a place to live. We have no money. We have seven kids, and nobody likes renting their precious house to seven small children, et cetera, et cetera. And he laughed, lovingly, thank goodness. And he said, Hallie, your spreadsheet can predict a lot of things, but it cannot predict whether God can move a mountain. And that really, that's something that I haven't been able to get through my head because, again, we think we're so smart. Well, I think I'm so smart, and I think I have everything figured out, but at the end of the day, God can do anything he wants, and he did. He found us a lovely house in a great neighborhood, of course, and my husband laughed again. But it's important to remember that. It's important to remember that when you're scared, don't forget that at any moment, God can move a mountain. The next thing I want to say is, especially while you're all here together, lift your fears out of the darkness. Whether we're scared or we're ashamed, we like to bury our fears down deep. And we like to let them fester. And they grow grossly out of proportion. So I would really encourage you guys today to find a friend and just tell them one fear. Because they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to tell you that this is a very silly fear and you should let it go, give it to God, or they're going to help you carry your cross and help you problem solve. So I really encourage you to bring those fears out of the darkness and into God's healing light. And also remember that fear, I'm, I'm sorry, courage is something that can be learned. I used to think that we were either born courageous or we weren't. And if you were born courageous, you got the luck of the draw, you know, and life was going to be really great for you. But if you were born fearful, everything was going to be difficult. But we can learn to be intrepid. So even if you're not consumed by fear today, pick up a, pro a practice of 
facing little fears that you have, little silly fears, and putting yourself in that uncomfortable position and learning to overcome those fears. Here's why it's so important to train ourselves in this way. Because spiritual growth is synonymous with spiritual surrender. The more we lean into God's will in our lives, the more we will grow. So the good news is that I don't know, and I could be wrong, but I don't know that there's a vocation out there that offers more opportunities to surrender than motherhood does. Mother, motherhood asks you to give up your very body for another through pregnancy and labor and breastfeeding and sleepless nights. Now the not so good news is that for all of the joy and the blessings that come with motherhood, this can be very painful and it can be very, very scary as God pushes you further and further out of your comfort zone. But it offers so many opportunities for surrender and so it op offers so many opportunities for growth and to grow closer to God. As a mother, it's scary when you're looking at those two blue lines and you don't know if you're quite ready to welcome another baby. It's scary when your little one has been sick for months on end and nobody can make him better. It's scary when your pantry is as empty as your bank account. It is scary when you don't know how you're going to endure another night of your baby waking up 50 times. And yes, Fitbit confirmed it. He's three now and he still doesn't sleep through the night. <clears throat> And it's tempting in those moments to check out, to numb yourself with social media, to shut others out to protect your heart, to not say yes when God asks you to take a leap of faith. But until we learn to stand bravely in the face of our fears, we will not be able to fully surrender. And our potential for spiritual growth will be diminished. And we will be unable to lean into the peace that God so desperately wants us to possess.